So I'm Kate V. Robertson. I live in Glasgow where I studied and uh, work. I'm from Edinburgh originally. Um, I've been in Glasgow for about nearly 20 years now, so it's definitely home. And this is my first exhibition in Dundee, so it's been nice to spend some more time up here. So I primarily work with sculpture and installation. Um, I trained originally in photography, but I've been making sculpture for the past uh, 10 years or so. But I don't have any formal sculptural training, so sometimes when I make things they look a bit strange because I've gone about them a funny way. So that's definitely become part of my aesthetic. But I'm also interested in sort of failure and dysfunction and fragility. So it really suits the work that sometimes it's a bit rough or a bit flawed. Um, and I'm really interested in materials and using materials in quite a pure sense and um, choosing them very carefully because of how they look or what their associations are and then um, maybe just pushing them slightly or using them a bit wrongly. So for example, I use a lot of cement and concrete, but it's usually very fragile and designed to break. So obviously that's the opposite of what it's supposed to do. Um, and in this show I've used um, newsprint, which has recurred throughout my practice over the past few years. I tend to use it blank, straight off the roll. So I've used um, Financial Times, which is that beautiful pink, peachy pink colour. But also then that brings with it all the sort of associations of um, economics and finance. And so I like to choose materials that have a set of references with them. Um, so I've got uh, tyres, concrete, resin, eggshells in this show. Um, so the show is called This Mess Has Kept Afloat, which is um, a quote from an artist and writer called Hito Steirel, and she writes really beautifully about technology and the screen, and this extract is from a book called The Wretched of the Screen, which I find very influential for this show. So it's a bit more poetic than my usual titles are, um, but I often choose words from someone else. I don't normally use words or text in my work, so I like to just um, edit and pinch from other sources. So the, f the first piece you come to in the gallery is a cobbled floor, and the cobbles are all made from casts of Tupperware and food containers and discarded takeaway packaging. Um, and it's cast in concrete and it's laid to look like a cobbled floor and the audience is very welcome to walk on the floor and it's all a little bit uneven but some of the tiles are more fragile than others so there will definitely be some cracking and probably quite a lot of destruction over the course of the exhibition which I fully anticipate and um, and that's absolutely fine the viewers are very welcome to walk over there and I think the they look quite beautiful when they're cracked as well and the work just changes over the course of the exhibition and I, I think that's really good that the work is never static because nothing ever it stays the same. Um, it might turn to rubble uh, over the course of the show and that's fine but there's also at the other side of the exhibition there's the floor, a sort of sand made from eggshells which is also um, allowed to be walked on and that's just a very different sort of sensation underfoot. Um, it's still a cracking but it's obviously of a very different nature and I suppose the idea is maybe that some of the, the, the cobbled floor will eventually become sort of like sand and get trodden on into the other space and the eggshells will travel on people's feet back and I suppose it's just that idea of from one extreme to the other of something becoming degraded and uh, eroded. Um, so my name is Andrew Lacon. I'm an artist based in Birmingham. I'm originally from Dudley and I studied my undergraduate in Plymouth, uh, University of Plymouth, and then I went on to study my Masters at Royal College of Art finished here in 2011 and then been based in Birmingham since about 2012. So Fragments kind of comes from like several places, just the fact that the image which kind of appears in the floor um, is individual fragments um, which are made up from like stone fragments essentially um, but it's kind of looking at archaeology and sort of like historical objects which have kind of been found or removed um, and this idea of like we see fragments of works you know so we'll see often see broken parts of flooring or bits of walls which are removed and put into museums so it's this idea that yeah like 
it's fragmented or it's some kind of fragment of an object. It's something you probably shouldn't like admit to, but I love touching art. Like, I, well, I love touching just materials in general, a bit like when a kid's got a stick along a railing. It's kind of like that. So I use the back of my fingers of so the, like, because obviously the ends of your fingers kind of worn and kind of like hardened and then the oils and stuff. But like, you use just that bit of your finger and you can just rub it along stuff just as you, yeah. And I think that's why I don't paint. I've never had the same, I've never felt like I want to touch a painting. A, like a, a bust, like a marble bust of a bald man is like one of the best things to kind of touch. So this kind of relationship to touching is kind of, yeah, it's kind of grown. I guess it's kind of, it's always been there for me and then it's kind of started to impact within my work, which has kind of led me to wanting people to understand the materials I use. So the work that I made, I've made for the show, it's, you know, there is marks, there is dents because it's a handmade object and it is, you know, the very nature of terrazzo and material and marble and concrete, it's not going to be perfectly flat. It's not going to be, and it's not an industrial process. It's, you know, it's got the artist's hand in it in the same way, you know, if you were sculpting marble with a hammer and chisel or painting or... I guess it's a weird one because it's a single piece of work, but it's made up of 50 fragments. So it's like, it's kind of individual, but it's, it's not. Um, and it's by far the biggest... Thing I've done and I think that idea of yeah first institutional show was really pushing it beyond what I'd ever thought was possible before um so yeah it feels especially for like something that's made by hand um quite a substantial piece of work um and some of my recent works have been kind of adapted into sort of benches where it kind of looks like gallery furniture but we still treat it like a sculpture, but actually it is a functioning bench, so you could sit on it, and it's that hesitation of do you, don't you, you know, we're in a gallery, so we should look, but not touch. And almost for the same way for, yeah, in gallery one, you've got this, you're greeted with an object, but because there's space to walk around it, initially you're not sure if you should step on or shouldn't step on, and then that whole decision of whether to, in whether or how to engage with it, I think becomes really interesting, because the way the light will reflect the colors up the wall, and essentially it is a large image, so it's still got this element of like image making attached to it, but there's so many different ways to kind of experience it or think about it or deal with it. And I quite like that some people will just kind of walk onto it and go straight towards a window because, you know, that's generally what people do in galleries when there's a nice view outside. Or maybe they'll just walk around it and like leave and not actually step on it. And I think that's also nice because you've got that sort of relationship between when the spectator steps onto it they become a spectacle and almost like a performer for other viewers and this navigating space kind of becomes quite an interesting idea for me I guess. The invitation to both artists was very much to respond to DCA's galleries and um, to think about how materials that they're um, researching and are interested in and are experimenting with how they might sit very specifically within Gallery 1 and Gallery 2. And I think there's a really interesting shared, a shared love of materials, but also a kind of desire to explore all the possibilities contained within very specific materials. And another thing about uh, both artists' approach to to exhibition making as well as art making in general is that they aren't as precious as you might as one might think um, artists are in relation to how people um, physically engage with their works so the the artworks and sculptures and objects contained within the galleries um, in both Kate and Andrew's exhibitions quite willfully and gleefully fly in the face of the usual look but don't touch uh, assumption that many audiences have going into a museum or gallery space. Both artists want uh, visitors to in some ways touch the works, feel the works, arguably to smell as well um, in very subtle ways and that's very much wrapped up in, in how both artists want to kind of create an experiential uh, feeling in the gallery. Um, they, they're creating kind of entire environments to step into 
as opposed to simply creating objects to be viewed from a certain distance.